Dave Rubin, otherwise known as Rave Dubin, has a really interesting new theory about the far right. Um, his theory is that they're actually <laughs> the left. <laughs> I don't have the full clip, so I don't know, like, what the full context is, like, why this was included in the broader conversation that he was having with his audience. Nonetheless, what he says here is, um, we'll call it fascinating. Now, is there some far right, which really is far left because it's collectivist, is there some white nationalist problem on the right? Well, yes, it's a tiny little thing that has no institutional power. I don't think Trump is part of it. I don't think Tucker Carlson is part of it. And because it's collectivist, it's actually left, not right. But that, that's a whole separate issue. If you, were, if you were really far right, that would mean that you're just the ultimate individualist, meaning you don't want government. So you know, that's like you want to live in Mad Max or something, which I think is kind of fun to talk about, but I don't think is that real. Okay. Um, that short clip that we just watched, dare I say, contained too many high level ideas because i don't know how to respond to that like my, my brain, is, brain is in recovery, recovery mode from, from taking, taking in so too many, many high level important, important ideas. ideas i don't i don't know what to say i took the time to transcribe everything that he said there because i really wanted to dissect this and i still don't know how to make heads or tails of this he says now is there some far right which really is far left so his assertion is that there's not actually any white nationalists in the Republican Party, because in actuality, the far right really is the far left. And the evidence for that is, well, the far right, white nationalists specifically, they're collectivist. And since collectivists are leftists, that means that white nationalists are actually leftists. So that conveniently solves the white nationalist problem that the Republican Party currently has, and it is now all of a sudden a problem that the Democratic Party has to deal with, I'm assuming. This is a very, very, um, it's an interesting take. The difference is that would I describe white nationalists as collectivists? Because I kind of feel like he doesn't know what that means. I think that white nationalists more specifically are tribalists. Sure, they do prioritize the group over the individual as collectivists do, but the difference is that collectivists, generally speaking, from the standpoint of economic politics, they are looking at this from the perspective of, in a civilized society, isn't it better that we pull resources so everyone benefits? rather than letting some individuals go hungry, go homeless. Like, it's that battle between wit versus yo-yo. Wit is W-I-T-T, -T, we're in this together, versus you're on your own. It's a very simplistic economic philosophy. And so what he's saying is that white nationalists are actually collectivists, because collectivists, since they prioritize the group, well, by definition, that makes white nationalists, who prioritize white identity over everything else, leftists. It's some really interesting logic. You have to make a lot of leaps from point A to point B. Um, ultimately, what this proves is nothing. The point he's making doesn't really make any sense. I think I've been a little bit too generous and charitable in trying to make sense of what he was saying. If white nationalists, like to the extent that they actually support collectivism, it's to the exclusion of everyone who is not white. So if they theoretically support a welfare state, which we don't know that all white nationalists do, maybe some do, it is to the exclusion of everyone else. Not necessarily collectivist. That's more tribalistic. But he also said something in here that's really interesting. So he says that white nationalists, are they a problem on the right? Well, yes. It's a tiny little thing that has no institutional power. He then goes on to name two very popular white nationalists with lots of institutional power. He says, I don't think Trump is part of it. I don't think Tucker Carlson is part of it. Now, I don't know why he name dropped these two individuals, but Donald Trump was the president of the United States. He was a white nationalist, a white supremacist. Like he retweeted one of his own followers saying white power. Look at the policies that he instituted over the course of four years. Someone who was a demagogue, who specifically was demeaning and demonized other races, calling Mexicans rapists and whatnot, 
That person is a white supremacist, and he was the president. If that's not institutional power, I don't know what is. Now, when it comes to Tucker Carlson, someone who claims that immigrants make America dirtier, um, that is pretty clearly uh, white supremacist. I don't think that individuals who aren't white supremacists would think that immigrants make America dirtier. He also very uh, clearly targets members of Congress, such as Ilhan Omar, claims that she hates our country. Our country, excluding hers, that's the implication. Um, but he doesn't have institutional power, according to uh, Dave Rubin, when he, he's the host of the most popular news show in the country, on the most popular news network in America. So finally, he says, if you were really far right, that would just mean you're the ultimate individualist, meaning you don't want government. So that's like you want to live in Mad Max or something, which I think is kind of fun to talk about, but I don't think is that real. So his view of political ideology is really, really oversimplified, and I don't think he has a grasp of the political terminology that he's using. I just don't understand why he has a show. Like, he has to be the dumbest person in all of political commentary. And this is across the left, the right. I'm including the most extreme figures. Uh, he's the dumbest out of everyone. You could tell, like, he's just genuinely disinterested in politics. Like, he would be more suited to do commentary on gossip related to celebrities or something like that. And he kind of did do that uh, a long time ago. Like, when he had his own show in The Young Turks, he would interview celebrities like Lance Bass and whatnot. And they'd talk about gossip. And sometimes they'd get a little bit political. But, you know, nothing nothing too in-depth. He doesn't want to be doing this, you could tell. But, I mean, he made this bed. Uh, and this is the grift that he pursued. So, you know, you can't really back out. It's It's lucrative. So... He's pursuing it, but you can tell, like, he just, he doesn't care. Like, he doesn't read political philosophy. He doesn't read any of the right-wing figures that supposedly influence him. He just, he doesn't even know the talking points that right-wingers use, generally speaking. Like, if I listen to Tim Pool's podcast, he's going to say certain things that a lot of right-wingers say. If you consume right-wing media, they're all kind of going to think the same way and as a result say the same things. They kind of parrot each other and whatnot. Um, Dave Rubin doesn't sound anything like them. Like, he's not part of that right-wing echo chamber as his colleagues are. Like, for me, like, if you watch uh, David Dole, Kyle Kalinske, Benjamin Dixon, you know, all of us, we kind of have the same themes in our shows, right? We say kind of the same thing. Um, and the same is true on the right, because if you think a certain way, if you subscribe to a certain political ideology, like you're going to have a lot of overlap. But Dave Rubin's show is so like unique. The only area where there's overlap with other right wingers is when he talks about like cancel culture and stuff, because that's easy. You don't necessarily have to do research. You just bring on like some right winger who was banned on Twitter and you say, this is evidence that we don't have free speech anymore. So unless it's like the laziest thing imaginable, I mean, his show is almost apolitical. It's it's just so stupid. So I don't know what to say. Uh, this is uh this is uh Dave Rubin, very serious political commentator, who says that white nationalists, the far right, they're actually the left. Okay, rave. I like talking about ideas. Alpha male, not a beta male.